How's that? Your 18th fight, you fight Carl Schmidt in RSF 2. Yeah. You know, reality submission fighting 2. Um, were you a big ticket seller locally? I, you know, I wouldn't say I was huge, but I was decent. You know, I mean, I, uh, uh, you know, I would easily get a hundred people to come watch me. You know, I mean, that, that I would sell, you know, I'd sell a hundred or, or maybe even, you know, 10 or 20 more at whatever. But, uh, but I think uh, a lot of people knew me too. And even people that I wasn't selling to came uh, because those, those shows were packed, you know, I mean, I, what Randy had, I want to say, had a thousand people, maybe, maybe more at those shows. I even say more than that. I, I yeah. never missed one of his shows. I, I, I made the drive every time. Uh, yeah. I'll tell you too. The thing is, is uh, you know, that's a murderer's row, man. You know, that really is because Clementi, he's a you know, he's a guy who has, you know, a ton of fights and made the UFC and and a pro all the way. I love Rich Clementi. You know, Carl he's Smith. A- is a guy that people don't, won't even remember Carl Schmidt, but Carl Schmidt was a big freaking ex Marine mother effer that yeah. was tough as hell, you know? Good Ross. Guy, yeah. He, yeah. He beat up Henry. Uh, and that's how man I knew Morris. about him. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. That, that's how I knew about him. So man, that's a, you know, you, nobody except for nerds like me and Mike give you credit for you know, fighting Carl Schmidt, but man, that's, you know, that's crazy. That's a murderous row of guys. Yeah, and it's like they're one right after another after another, and you know you don't see any like cut stoppages in like in his career up until that point, and it's like at some point your body's got to give up. Like you're you're not allowing yourself to really rest much. Um, are you training the way you used to up until this point? Or are you just kind of fighting and, and doing road work? I'll tell you what, I spent a lot of those days, all I would do, and I credit a lot of how just mental toughness, I would roof all day. And my old roofing boss, Dan Hennis was his name. He Toughest guy I, I ever met in my life. I don't mean the toughest fighter. I just mean a guy. Tough who, yeah, just, just could no amount of pain was going to stop him. No, uh, you know, no, I'm tired. None of that. You know, he just, he, he was just hardcore. And I learned a lot from, from watching Dan and being with Dan, but, but back in those days, I would roof all day and then, you know, go home, get a shower straight to the gym. And then I'd grapple and I would grapple box with whoever would stick around after practice the grapple box and then I'd go fight, you know, and that was, that was uh, the way I got myself prepared. And, and, you know, that combination, you know, it may not be uh, an ideal combination, but boy, I- I'm telling you when you've been out in that hot sun all day and you're throwing around uh, 90 pound bags of shingles and, and, and roofing and uncomfortable positions on roofs all day. And then you go up and you're wrestling tough you you get tough you know i mean it's it's uh it, it's it was a hell of a program 